Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop. Today, I'm with Plugin Alliance, talking to one of my favorite engineers on the planet, Mr. Michael Brower. I've had a privilege, I counted, of interviewing this guy now five times. Can you believe that, Michael? This is going to be time number five of me interviewing you. It's quite an honor. We have fun every time. <laughs> the honor is mine, <laughs> obviously. Um, Michael, every time I talk to him, I learn something new, and I'm excited to talk to him about saturation today in particular, because our excuse for talking today is Plugin Alliance is releasing a new version of the super popular black box saturator. This version has mid-side controls, new filters. What's the whole deal about saturating in mid-side? Why would you want some new filters? I don't know. We're going to talk about and we'll get some insights from Michael on how he uses this tool and saturation more generally. Before we get into it, for the few of you who've never heard of Michael Brower, he's worked with an amazing array of artists, um, James Bay, John Mayer, Coldplay, Grizzly Bear, way back in the day with James Brown and Aretha Franklin, Luther Vandross, all over the map, Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney, a whole bunch of great stuff. Always excited to talk to this dude. Michael, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, all right. Let's get it going. All right. So let's talk about the nerdy stuff, the saturation. You are now in an all digital room there in your uh, new studio in the Catskills where you've been working a lot since, uh, you know, a lot of people have shifted to home studios more recently. And my guess is that you're probably relying on saturation in the box more than when you were in the analog world. Can you give me a sense for how you use saturation, how you approached it in the past, how you approach it today, and what's changed, if anything? Well, saturation is really interesting, isn't it? Because you're looking at when it's appropriate, you want to dirty up a song, but in the way you're dirtying it up, whether you're dealing with even harmonics or odd harmonics, you, you're saturating sometimes when it was the analog desk, you're saturating the desk, you're finding that sweet spot. Um, and when you're really pushing hard the tubes, of course, you're getting that type of saturation. And when you're recording to tape, you're working the tape as to the harder you hit it, the more you saturate on. And so you always want to find that nice sweet spot in each one. And, you know, growing up, you knew exactly how hard you wanted to hit the tape. And depending on the kind of record you were making, you would you might use Scotch 250 or you might use, you know, Ampex or, or you know, whatever is out there. And um, that ended once I stopped printing to tape. But I still wanted that sound in my head. And, I mean, not only in my head, but, <laughs> right. you know, to be able to... <laughs> Um, Take it from out you know, of your head to, into reality. Exactly. And so I was still hearing that saturation. And so I would go, you know, I would push things a little bit harder and, and um, you know, just still get that. It's almost like the difference between film and video. Mm. You know, it's just that there's a certain color that you can get by tape. And, and so it was just a matter of, okay, what am I going to do now? Because I really don't want to go to tape anymore. It's It's not efficient with all the today's recalls and and the many many different versions and stuff so um slowly going to hybrid and then you know now at this point pretty much in the box i mean i still have analog stuff i've got my bensons my delays and and i've got some other stuff that are in storage i just haven't really had a chance yet to bring bring here i'm sure i'll have my federal and uh you know some of the really rare compressors that that are always fun to have. It's not like it's life or death, but, but you know, there are situations that come up where I go, oh, that vocal sound, I really want, you know, that the Awa green and stuff. So, but all of that, you're talking about how they saturate and, and there's a tone and an attitude that is associated with those different types of, of saturation. You know, with the, with the Neve, uh, I grew up on an 8068, and when you found that sweet spot, you were pushing even harmonics. And then when I moved over to the SSL, the 4000, it was new to me that sound because you're pushing really odd harmonics. And that's when people are saying, that's the crunch sound, you know? And I never really associated the Neve with a crunch. You know, it was more of a really musical, warm thing going on. So as the years go by and, and companies you know, like Plugin Alliance and others, they're very, very interested in saturation and and the musical approach to saturation, because you know you can get something um, 
where it, it, it just sounds like the plugin is crapping out, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> you know, and that's not saturation. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a crap out <laughs> but you know when we're pushing things hard you know how what you know what did these geniuses you know have figured out is you know my is it starting to push second harmonics is it pushing third is it a combination and how much of it um and so you know for me um and i think i don't I'm not as nerdy as I might appear, even though I had all of that gear behind me. But I, I'll just play, you know, I'll, I'll put a plug-in up and I like it or I don't like it. And if maybe there's, you know, six versions, six different versions of one particular piece of, you know, originally a, a copy of a piece of equipment, I'm going to try all six and then just decide how they feel to me, which is the one that, that vibes the best. I don't really have any particular loyalty to anything except for what sounds best. Yeah. So, you know, obviously more and more now because I'm going further and further away from analog as being the source and being able to push it, um, I go to five or six, seven, eight different forms of saturation everything that it's a you know different forms of distortion and um and set you know saturation you do it too hard you're moving into distortion so it's you know it, it's the minimum to the maximum and some of them are full on so a question for you there's there's really two ways to go about getting saturation and one is to use tools that do something but also saturation like a mixing desk, like uh, a compressor that also has some saturation characteristics. So I imagine just because I know that you work in a very bus centric way where you have different compressors on different buses, and then you have, you know, some master bus stuff going on that each of those units or some of them are giving some color. What do you think about places to put like a dedicated saturator, like something like the black box? When are you breaking out a tool like that, that really only meant to saturate instead of some device that has saturation characteristics instead, uh, in addition to the other stuff that it does. Well, interestingly, this the new box, the MS. Um, I have found myself. I tried it on everything. Like any time that I that I learn a piece of gear, or whether it's a new plugin, I try it on everything, mm-hmm. and then I can and I push it too hard or not enough, to the point where. I really get a full picture of what this tool is capable of doing and what is it not great at, mm-hmm. right? And now I know because I, I, that's all I do for the next, you know, for like two or three weeks. I just keep using it on everything. I mean, as long as it sounds good. But I'm just very interested in seeing, you know, putting it really through its paces and on – you know, when Plugin Alliance sent me this on um, the beta for the new version of it, it was really exciting. I mean, to begin with, I discovered the black box by accident. I think I've said this before. You know, you know when you're selecting something and if you let go too soon, right? <laughs> you get some other plugin. You know, <laughs> and I was looking for one thing and I ended up with another, and I was like, "What is this?" and I started using it as I instantly liked it because it was a very musical saturation. And then it has so many little options to tweak that kind of saturation, right? Everything from an alternate tube in there, or you can just bypass the saturation. You can just use a triode and pentode. And, you know, there's there's just a lot of cool little features. And and they all add up. It's not like you touch it a little bit and it's like, whoa, that's too much. You know, you can just, you have a good parameter of movement as you slowly push whatever part of this plugin you want. And I found that what I liked about the original, but I was missing a little bit, is if I really wanted to open up a room, for example, and I wanted to open up in a width type of situation where... I I wanted to saturate the sides and maybe less the center. I didn't want so much energy going in the center. I really, what I was looking for was just the outside. And that was immediate with, you know, their new version. And it was so cool. So I started trying it on everything. And if I wanted acoustic guitar just to be a little bit wider, 
and I could get some, something really nice and then just do the wet dry combination, you know, to the point where it was wide, but it wasn't so obvious. And, um, and if, you know, if there was other things where I really wanted a lot more center to it, it could be the snare drum or the kick, you know, or really just, I wanted to get nastier on the guitars and in the choruses only, I wanted these guitars really to stand out further out in the stereo mix. It was so easy to do, you know, and, and I could just get it as dirty or clean as I wanted. It yeah. was fun. And um, and then one day I was mixing something, and overall it was just a little bit too clean. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, let me try it on the stereo bus. Mm-hmm. And I put it across that, and it was just subtle. And I think that is included in one of my presets. Um, and it's just... It's just nice. I don't know what it, you know, I mean, nice in a dirty way. You know, it just added a little bit more grit to the mix. Um, And I made it a little bit wider. I didn't need to to be adding a widening plugin on top of that. Everything is right there. But they've they've also got within the, uh, am I talking too much? No, this is great. Even within the saturation, hold on a second, let me look back a little bit. Yeah, so in the saturation, you've got now, unlike the original, um, you've got different different selections of band, bandwidth and frequency, and then you can solo it, and you can really fine-tune what you want on the sides and then solo the top and fine-tune what you want in the center. And then there's so many combinations here, the calibration where you have dark normal bright and the intensity of that you know you get what you what you're looking for depending on what the instrument is it's just what the original was except it's a bit more on steroids and and way more versatile so um i really like it and you can you can now with this new version you can really fine tune what it is that you want to bring to the table i like it it's it's just it's very very instinctive, um, very logical in its approach. And for me, that's good because I don't want to have to be looking at this and reading the manual just to turn <laughs> right. the thing on. So yeah, I love you that know, whenever you find I those I don't plugins, have time for that. Yeah. I love that when you ever find those plugins that are both simple and flexible at the same time. And I think that's uh, definitely something you can say about this one. Yeah. You did talk a little bit about the idea of saturating sides separately from center to widen things out or saturating center more than sides to kind of, you know, give them a little bit more focus. I'm curious uh, in what ways you've thought about some of these new abilities to kind of adjust the frequency of the saturation to make it more frequency selective. So you're either saturating only lows or not saturating lows or saturating just mids. Have you found any ways? Or you can be doing attenuation too. You can attenuate the center you know, because you have all of these different curves. Yeah. You can attenuate, you can do flat, mm-hmm. you can boost. I mean, it just gives you basically everything you might be looking for. You know, there's no limitations to this. Cool stuff. In addition to those uh, mix bus presets that you mentioned, you made a bunch of presets for this. What are some of the other Michael Brow, Brow presets people can look forward to checking out uh, if they go ahead and try out the uh, Black Box MS? I, I think I try. I put it on a lot of instruments. I, I have to, I'd have to look. Um, hold on a second. Let me just see. Got acoustic guitar, bass, bass synth, guitar ambient, like four different types of guitars, whether it's mel- melody or picking or ambience. I got horns. I got a mix bus. I've got a piano. And then I've got a room, drum room, snare, synth. You know, I got a little bit of everything there. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks so much for telling us a bit about your experience with saturation over the years, how it's changed, and also some specific applications for this black box. People who haven't checked it out, you can check it out at plugin-alliance.com, where you can check out anything Plugin Alliance makes for free. You should check out the mega subscription bundle. I have it. There's like, I don't know, 160 plugins or something in there. It's crazy, but they're all pretty awesome. And so many of them are modeled after classic analog gear or new high-end boutique analog gear like the black box. Before we let you go for the day, any other Plugin Alliance family of plugins that you've been enjoying as of late? Well, I'm sure you know that the 9000 is my go-to. That's on every channel when I'm mixing um, because I love SSL. I never really wanted to, to go away from SSL, but 
you know, one thing led to another, and and I felt that it was it was best that I I go towards hybrid, and then eventually in the box. But I never wanted to remove SSL from my everyday work, specifically the nine thousand, and specifically plug-in Alliance has got that one nailed, and I have a lot of presets on there too. And then there's another one I've been playing with recently. It's the uh, is it BX twenty five hundred? Oh yeah, the, the delay, delay. twenty five hundred. Yeah, twenty five hundred. That is so much fun, man. It is just endless toys, endless ideas that you can be doing with that. Uh, very, very clever. It's like, you know, sometimes I'll just accidentally again, you know, just hit something. They've got so many now, and like, ah. Uh, and I'll try something. Oh, what is this thing? Oh, there's another one too that I really like. Of course, I can't remember it, but it looks like two little speakers, that and it's a widener. Oh, the brain works. Uh, yeah, it's like the wideners looks like two amplifiers kind of. And that's the BX Shred Spread. It looks like a, an amp spread. head with two speakers coming off of it. That's right. I was doing that uh, with guitars and just spreading out the guitars. Mm -hmm. That was that's they're just they're cool. I mean, Plug in Alliance, those guys are cool. They, you know, they, they really put a lot of thoughts into it. They're musicians. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks so much again for taking the time to share your experience, your insights into using saturation. Always super excited to hear from you. Always get new ideas from talking to you. Uh, those of you out there who haven't tried out the black box or this new version, the mid-side version of it, definitely check it out. This is an upgrade to the original black box where now you get to operate in mid-side mode where you can saturate the center separately from the sides so we can get different colors for each, even different EQ curves for each. Definitely check it out. Again, plug in dash where you can try out anything they make for free. Uh, I recommend the Mega Bundle. It's one of the best steals in the audio world. Michael, for people who want to find out more about you, follow you, all that stuff, what are the best places to find you on the web? Uh, you can find me just by putting my name in, mbrower.com for my s website, or on Instagram, it's Michael underscore Brower underscore. All right. Thanks again, uh, Michael. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. See you next time.